God's good. He's faithful. Amen. And he provides. So we're, we're thankful for his faithfulness. Amen. Also, we've, we've put back on the back table. I know many of you have bought copies and many of you have seen Finger of God 2 already, but uh, we still have a few copies left. They make great Christmas gifts. Amen. And I, I, I'll just say, if you have a family member or loved one that, um, how can I say this nicely, is not is a pre-Christian or maybe backslidden, uh, that is a great gift. And there's such an anointing and there's such, it is a great gift, right? Uh, it's such a great gift because it's there's something very powerful on that movie. Amen. So praise God. At this time, we're going to dismiss the kids to go to their program. And uh, we're thankful for what the Lord is doing in our kids program. We're also looking at some dates to schedule a youth slash young adults party over the holiday season. So we're trying to figure all that out. So uh, we'll announce that soon. Praise God. <laughs> Maybe it's in the middle of a, a baby being born. I don't know. So um, I also want to thank you guys for uh, praying for me. Um, Friday, I turned in um, the final draft for my ministry training manual. Ended up being about 65 to 70 pages long, um, six chapters. Uh, so I'm on a Christmas break for about three to four weeks. Hallelujah. Even though I still have to do stuff over the break. But, um, and then my next session, I actually will be teaching a lot of that. And, uh, but God's good and faithful. And um, thanks to my wife for helping me these last eight weeks, and someday I will finish all this. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, higher education is a wonderful thing, isn't it? Praise God. It is a wonderful thing. It really is. It really is. So praise God. Well, this morning, let's just jump in. And uh, I'm just thankful to the Father for what He's doing. I, I just really have a real sense of something very, very special happening. And that the Lord is really positioning us uh, for what He's going to do in 2019. I know it's too early to do, um, you know, those services where you talk about what's coming in the next year. It's just a weird time. I mean, holiday seasons. I love Christmas so much. And, um, you know, I started to teach on deliverance because that was the last chapter I wrote. And I thought, well, that'd be a really interesting Christmas time message on let's cast some demons out. Um we all are going to be with family, right? So we're trained, uh, you know, yeah, familiar spirits, all that good stuff. But I, I want to continue kind of along the lines of what we were talking about last week. And, and there's a real anointing to build, amen. And, uh, you know, I, I was so aware um, that the apostolic anointing was so present last Sunday, and, and it, it was present. It was increasing, and, and you know, the apostolic spirit, the apostolic anointing is a building anointing, amen, and, and we need that in the church at this moment. We need it, and because uh, whenever you see God extending his kingdom and advancing his kingdom, um, there, there's a release of the apostolic anointing, amen, and uh, to, to set things in order, to cause the church to move forward. Amen. This is a time when the church really needs to move forward. Amen. And there's a, there's a lot of turmoil in the earth. Hallelujah. Um, and when there's turmoil in the earth, often it's because God is wanting to advance his kingdom. And, and he's looking for apostolic people who are sent ones, who God has sent into the earth, who God has commissioned, and uh, to, to see his kingdom extended. So I, I just believe this morning uh, that there's a real further release of that happening today because, you know, um, someone may not have the office of the apostle, but they have an apostolic anointing. Amen. And God's wanting the apostolic spirit to be released in his people. Amen. And, and to send us and to cause us to be builders in the earth. And how many of you know we need God's wisdom to build the church properly? Amen. And, uh, you know, it was Dr. Billy Graham, and I, I've made references to this before, but 
he said that about 95% of what the church does is without the Spirit of God. And, uh, you know, if Billy Graham said it, it must be gospel truth, right? And, uh, he, but, but there's, there's this wisdom from God that he wants to release that will enable us to build. Amen. We need God's wisdom to build the church properly. And, you know, as a matter of fact, the, the church, and we are the church, amen, the church is to express the wisdom of God to principalities and powers. Amen. And that's part of our call. Let's just read that very quickly in Ephesians chapter 3, just as we get started. Uh, Ephesians 3.10. The, the church has a big call, right? Our church isn't, our, our call uh, <laughs> isn't just to meet together, fellowship, um, though that's a big part of what we're called to do. We're supposed to fellowship. We're supposed to encourage one another. We're supposed to strengthen one another. We're supposed to learn how to be successful in life. We're supposed to learn how to good, have good character. We're supposed to learn to move in the gifts and impact our communities and our businesses and our families and be good husbands and wives and fathers and children and all those things. But part of our call is, is much bigger than that. Um, in Ephesians 3.10, in order that the manifold wisdom of God might be made known through the church to the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly places. Right? Did you know that you're called to manifest God's wisdom to principalities and powers that oppose the kingdom of God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's a big call, right? And the thing is, none of us can really do that on our own. Right? That's why we need to be being built together as the church that's advancing the kingdom. Amen. I hear a lot of people say stuff like, well, I'm not really called to be a part of a, the church right now. Well, you're deceived. You're deceived if that's your attitude because we are called to join together as an army, as a people, as an apostolic company of believers right, that are building the kingdom together right? Uh, we talked about Nehemiah last week, amen? And, uh, and Nehemiah, it's really interesting if you continue to look at Nehemiah a bit, but his, his name actually means comforter, and he's a type of the Holy Spirit, right? And uh, he, Nehemiah was sent to build. I'm not re-preaching last week's message. If you weren't here last week, and I think most of us were, you can find it on uh, SoundCloud or YouTube, uh, but, you know, Nehemiah was sent to build. He had authority from the king where he was commissioned to build. Amen. We're a sent people that have authority from the king to build something in our city, in our region that will bring transformation. Amen. And, uh, you know, we looked a little bit last week that um, shows that when we build according to God's pattern, like God sent, like He commissioned us to build. Now, this is a truth I don't really like. When we're sent to build, there's going to be an element of warfare. right? How many of you wish that you could avoid spiritual warfare in your life? Oh my gosh, wouldn't it be so much easier? But I found that when God actually gives a building anointing, amen, that the enemies of God, as we saw in Nehemiah, and the enemies of God aren't people, right? Now, sometimes demonic things use people, right? They, they try to use them, and, uh, uh, but the thing is, there, there are things that oppose the advance of the kingdom, and, and you, uh, you can't build um, apostolically, you can't build kingdom and not expect to experience warfare, right? And it's just going to happen. And, you know, we looked at when, when Nehemiah and when he raised up uh, this, this company, this Nehemiah company to build, they were building the wall together, right? And as they built the wall together, they had um, tools in one hand and weapons in the other, right? Apostolic people, apostolic churches, they are people of warfare, right? Now, they don't just go out, I don't, I don't go out looking for devils to fight. I just don't. Some people do that and get into a lot of trouble. 
But I found that when you start building in a region, um, the enemy knows what's going on and he'll come, right? And apostolic people are people of warfare because as we're advancing, we're dealing with those things that say, no, this is how it's always been. We want to keep people in bondage. We want to keep people in false systems. And, and we don't like that you're, you're bringing truth and anointing and worship. Because how many know that worship was warfare this morning? I mean, it was very intimate. It wasn't like, but in, in that worship, there was a release of the kingdom that was driving powers of darkness back. And apostolic churches are warfare churches that are able to fight through opposition and build, right? Now, sometimes that's hard on people because sometimes if you've not been in a church that's a warfare church, when it starts coming, you're like, well, can I just go back to where I was and have cookies and coffee and sing Kumbaya? You can but you'll never fully see the extension or the expression of the kingdom. You'll never truly announce the manifold wisdom of God as he's called you to, to do. Amen? And so, uh, and so we're uh, apostolic churches, Nehemiah companies, they are churches of warfare. And, amen? And they, they fight through opposition. And they build in the midst of of opposition. Amen. And, and, the, and they do it through, first of all, anointing, right? But also just through faithfulness, right? Because how many of you know when, when God starts giving you something, right? And you, the, the word is so full of this principle and the parables of Jesus are so full of this principle. And he's like, okay, I'm giving you the kingdom. Now you stirred what I'm giving you. And he waits for us to see, isn't that funny that God says, I'm going to give you this and I'm going to be here for you. I've given you everything. I've given you my anointing. But will you stirred what I've given you? And if we stirred what he gives us, what does he do? He gives us more. Right Now, sometimes that's challenging. Right? If you're a good employee, guess what happens? You get more work. <laughs> Sometimes that's challenging. I see some people sitting here today like, I am overworked now. Stop it. <laughs> right? But isn't that a, isn't, doesn't that what happened in the natural? When you get promoted, you get more responsibility? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but God wants to give us increase, Right? so that we can continue to build what he's giving. And I touched on this last week, amen, that, we're, that, that we possess the land by building and by stirring what God's given us. Right? When God gave the children of Israel the land, he said, land's yours, it belongs to you, now go and possess it. You're going to have to drive out some demons, you're going to have to drive out some giants, you're going to have to make some walls to fall, and I'm going to not let you possess it all at once, even though it's yours. You're going to take it little by little, because if you don't, you'll be overcome and you'll overextend yourself, right? But go in and possess the land. Now, sometimes that's challenging, and I addressed this last week because we see so far ahead sometimes that we're like, God, we see what you said to do, and it's not fully there yet, and we're frustrated. And God's like, look, I'm already moving. And we talked about that some last week, right? As people got so touched. In, I mean, a couple of weeks ago, Alan got so touched in communion, right? There's something of his glory and his presence that's increasing. So many people got touched in our healing rooms, right? Something really powerful is happening. God continues to move, not just in our services, but in our Christian school. He continues to move in the supernatural school. Uh, there's something that God's doing and we're taking ground, right? And I gave the example of, you know, sometimes when you, you know, here we are about to go to at Christmas and see family members that you haven't seen in a while and you see like kids and you're like, whoa, you used to look like this, what's happened, right? When you're around that all the time, you don't always see that, the growth, but when you, but there's growth happening in our midst, right? 
we're taking ground and it's because God is releasing an apostolic anointing that causes us to build. Amen. We're taking the ground. Amen. We're taking land. And, you know, I want to look for, uh, we looked at Nehemiah last time. And before I move on from Nehemiah, I do want to read a scripture real fast. Isaiah 58, 12. And years ago, when I was in college, and I was, you know, really learning to hear the Lord, I was still living in Ardmore at this time, and I, I asked the Lord, I said, God, what are you saying to me about my life? And I heard, clear as day, Isaiah 58, 12, and I turned there, and it said, those from among you will rebuild the ancient ruins. You will raise up the age-old foundations, and you will be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets in which to dwell. Amen. Also, let's read a similar verse, Isaiah 61, 4. Then they will rebuild the ancient, ancient ruins. They will raise up the former devastations, and they will repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. Amen. These two verses are the results of apostolic ministry happening through people, through churches, repair. Isn't that what Nehemiah did? He said, man, Jerusalem's in ruins, and there has to be an anointing of restoration that comes to the church to restore what's been lost. And, and I, I, I've pondered that verse. At the time, I was like, God, I don't even know what this means. I know it's you, right? What, what are you saying? And I, I, months later, I began to study the book of Nehemiah, even 30 years ago, and I'm just like, God, you're saying something in this book that God's wanting to bring restoration to His people and His church and, and, and restore that which has been lost and restore a glory and an anointing to the church, not just in this city, though I believe Ardmore is a key city. Amen. I believe Ardmore has a strong apostolic call. I believe that uh, when Ardmore that everything that God's wanting for this city, but when Ardmore becomes into its destiny, it's going to shift a, this whole region. Amen? And God's doing something. So we're going to look this morning, we looked at Nehemiah last week, but we're going to look at some other people in the Old Testament that are, how many know that the Old Testament was written for our instruction? Right? I mean, we're under a different covenant and all those things, but God put those things in the Word so that we would see types and shadows and principles that allow us to live out new covenant realities right now. Amen. And so I'm going to look at, and there's so, there's so much ground I could cover today. And, um, but I, I want to first, this is, this is kind of a strange place to start, but I want to look at King Uzziah, right? And, and some of these principles actually come from John Eckhart, so I want to give him credit where credit is due. But King Uzziah was a, a, an, a type of an apostolic forerunner in what he did. Amen. And so we're going to turn to 2 Chronicles 26. Amen. 2 Chronicles 26. And he was a... He was, he, he was an apostolic forerunner who accomplished amazing things in a short amount of time, right? And, uh, and how many know that apostles and apostolic people, they are pioneers that lay foundations, right? They, they lay foundations that the rest of the church are like, oh my gosh, we can walk in the foundations that they've laid or that they've brought restoration to. I mean, we've talked about, you know, Azusa Street and the Azusa Street Revival and, and Seymour and what Seymour laid an apostolic foundation of the Pentecostal move in North America, right? He, he laid that foundation. People right now like, um, you know, uh, Bethel, you know, I talk about Bethel Church a lot, but Bill Johnson as an apostolic man and Bethel as an apostolic ministry has laid a foundation of what ministry looks like in this age, right? There, there, and Bill himself has said, I'm, we're a forerunner of what God wants to do all throughout the earth. 
He said God's doing something in Reading and Bethel that he wants to do in every city. Right? Here's apostolic bl blueprints. Take them and bring restoration and kingdom expansion to your city, your community, your neighborhood, your business, and bring change. Right? And I want in on that. I want in on that, amen? Because, uh, you know, God's commissioned us, and if you're here, He's commissioned you to bring change to your city and your region. Amen? And God wants to do that. He's wanting, He's longing to do that. Now, let's look at King Uzziah. And uh, let's just start reading. And, of course, he was a, he was a, a king of Judah. And it says that in, in verse 5, And he continued to seek God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding through the vision of God. For as long as he sought the Lord, God prospered him. Right. So here's one of the first characteristics in King Uzziah's life as, as an apostolic leader, as an ap leading an apostolic people, that he prospered as long as he sought God. Do you want to prosper in your life? One person does, two, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know you all want to prosper. Don't sit there and look religious. Right? Whether it's financially, whether it's in your health, whether it's in your soul, whether it's in your relationships. You know what the secret to prosperity is? First of all, seeking God. Right? And isn't that a mystery that the Christ, the hope of glory is in us? And yet he still wants us to seek him. Right? And as long as we seek him, because as we often say, there is always more. There's always more. Just when you think you've arrived or that you have it all, God goes, guess what? He's been doing it to the church for hundreds of years. Like, guess what? I'm going to do something that you haven't yet seen. And you're like, well, God, God, he surprises us. And usually moves of God bring new things that were always there all along that we hadn't seen. And he's like, I'm going to restore something to the church that's been lost. And surprise, you thought you'd arrived, but you better stay humble and you better seek me. Because generally, the people that persecute the new move of God were the people that had the last move of God. Right? He try he and he's like you. That's and I, God likes to do that. God, stay humble, stay teachable. Right? Seek God. Right? That's the first key to prosperity. Amen. And there are a whole lot of others, but that's not our message today. Right? So f number one, prayer. Right? Uh, that's a sign of being an apostolic people that we're seeking God. Amen. Uh, let's keep reading in verse 6. Now, Uzziah went out and warred against the Philistines. Hallelujah. Apostolic people are people of warfare. We already touched on that with Nehemiah, right? And, and they have authority to war, right? God gives an apostolic anointing, and it causes warfare to be released. Now, again, that's not the whole topic of my sermon, okay? But we're people of warfare, right? Paul, Paul is in a city in the New Testament, and, you know, it's a city known for divination, a counterfeit to the prophetic. It looked like the prophetic. It looked like, but it was, it was divination. And this servant girl who had a spirit of divination, she comes up to him, and she said, these, are, these men are servants of the Most High God. Right? Paul didn't go looking for warfare. It came looking for him. Right? And finally, after a couple of days, he got annoyed from her following around giving false prophecies that sounded like the real thing. And finally, he said, You spirit of divination, get out of her in Jesus' name. Now, I don't know if Paul should have done that or not because he ran into trouble because he touched the principality that was ruling over that whole region. Those things will come looking, and we, we deal with them as God brings them. Um, and again, a whole nother sermon, and humility, and all those things. That's not my message. 
but we're people of warfare. Amen. And this actually comes from seeking God. Right? You, you can't help. Now, first of all, you know, this is uh, even with, with Jehu, who killed Jezebel, right? But Jehu got anointed in the secret place first before he could go contend with Jezebel. So, first of all, you prosper from seeking God, and then as you gain authority in the secret place, he takes you out to contend with those demonic things, those principalities and powers that keep the church in a region from advancing. Now, we've got a lot of people who just want the formula. We like formulas, don't we? Right? Just give me the four steps of binding principalities over my city and I'm going to go do it. Well, did you get anointed in the secret place first? Usually not. And so the devil hands somebody's their tail end in a sling, you know, because they think I can just pray this prayer binding the devil and then he wallops you, right? Get the anointing in the secret place, right? And so apostolic people, they're people of warfare. Amen. So still in verse 6, he, he went out and warred against the Philistines and he broke down the wall of Gath and the wall of Jabna and the wall of Ashdod. A lot of funky sounding cities, right? And uh, so another thing that apostolic people do and ap uh, the apostolic anointing is it breaks down walls of tradition Religion, racism, and prejudice, right? And, uh, you know, these walls are built to keep, in bond to keep people in bondage and keep them from coming into freedom. And apostolic people are like, you know what? I had a, a lady here who's a leader who leads some groups, and she told me several years ago, she said, Pastor Andy, you just challenged me. And I'm like, why? <laughs> Isn't this normal? <laughs> you know, because, because there's something about, you know, you, you, you bring not just anointing, but you bring truth, right? And it causes things to begin to shift. And sometimes it's challenging being a forerunner in a region because other people aren't yet doing what the Lord... This sounds really arrogant, y'all which we're going to get to in a minute. One of the biggest weaknesses of apostolic people and apostles is pride. Um, <laughs> but God anoints you to begin to bring a shift into a region. Amen? And, and, uh, and that's just what He does. We, we Apostolic people break down walls. Amen? Jericho was shut up. No one was coming out or going in. And Joshua, as a type of the apostolic, said, we're coming in to possess the land, right? And we're going to march, we're going to praise, we're going to seek God, we're going to obey God until these walls fall, right? There was an apostolic anointing to take the stronghold that kept a whole nation in bondage, right? And so there's a breaking down of walls that's upon apostolic people, amen? Another thing that, that God does through apostolic people, um, says verse 7, And God helped him against the Philistines and against the Arabians who lived in Gerbal and the Meunites. And if I'm pronouncing those wrong, you don't know any better than I do, so we're good. <laughs> right? So another thing that will, God will give to apostolic people to possess a territory is he gives supernatural assistance, right? How many of you know we're not in this on our own? Aren't you glad? Not only do we have each other and in, in, in the body of Christ, but God's also releasing angelic armies. And you're like, well, I don't know about that. Well, read the Bible. He did that all the time. <laughs> I don't know about that, right? But he all when God sent someone out into warfare or to possess something, when they walked in obedience to what he was doing, 
he sent angelic armies. If you read the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament with an eye for the angelic, it's everywhere. There's all kinds of activity. Angels are coming and going and fighting and killing and strengthening and all this. God, God sent angelic armies to help us in taking the land. Now, many people around here see them all the time. I've seen them. I know some of y'all see them. I know there's some that come and go because they come from the presence of the Father with assignments. Right? There are some that stay here that oversee what God's doing. I was so aware of heaven breaking in this morning. So aware of it. And it's not sometimes so much that heaven's breaking in is that we shut our minds down enough that our spirit opens up to recognize what's already happening around us. But then sometimes there's an increasing activity. I mean, there, heaven is, the spirit realm is super active right now. Can you feel all that activity? I mean, we start feeling it in worship and we're like, oh, there's such holiness or fire or presence. What's, what's going on? It's because heaven's breaking in. Amen? And God sends His glory into our midst. He sends supernatural assistance. Amen? So, Father, we thank You for the, the angelic beings that are present Father, we thank you that you've sent them into our midst for a purpose. And Lord, I thank you that as we obey you, and Father, as we seek to see your kingdom extended, they move with us. We're not worshiping them, God. <laughs> we worship Jesus, but Father, I thank you that you sent them to assist us as heirs of salvation. So thank you, Lord. We just ask them to do, we give them permission to do, what you've commissioned them to do in this place, in this city. And Lord, we'll just take more reinforcements even that you want to send. Thank you, God. Amen. Verse 7, keep going. Um, maybe. Ah, it's verse 8, actually. The Ammonites also gave tribute to Uzziah, and his fame extended to the border of Egypt, for he became very strong. Now, don't worry, I'm not taking up an offering right now. Right? Some of y'all get that in a minute. But what happens when the apostolic anointing starts being released and it starts growing, and these things start happening like there's prayer, there's warfare, there's the breaking down of tradition, supernatural assistance, there's actually an anointing that starts attracting the wealth. Right. Now, and it, don't worry, it's not because I'm going to buy Jamie a Lamborghini. I might. Right? I might, but it won't be from the church offerings, okay? So, um, <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> But wealth is released when the apostolic anointing is released. Amen? Because what starts happening is the, the, the enemy's house starts getting plundered. It starts getting plundered. Did you know that Ardmore, it, there's wealth in this city? Right? Uh, at one time, Ardmore had more millionaires. Of course, we always hear this fact, right? per capita than any place else in the United States. It still, from what we heard a year or two ago, has 57 millionaires. Ardmore is an extremely wealthy city, right? And, uh, and I believe that, you know, um, not to get into all those things, but there's a wealth that God wants to release for His kingdom that yet has not been completely tapped, Right? And it's coming, and then as we continue to see the apostolic anointing extended, right, it's going to cause kingdom, you know, even not just kingdom wealth, but wealth of the wicked to be released into the kingdom. Amen. God wants it, and 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 as as uh, Uzziah moved into this, you know, and as he it caused wealth to get released. Amen. 
And uh, another thing, verse 9. Um, let's see if I make sure I don't want to skip this one point. Right, it says, it, before I do that, at the end of verse 8, it says that Uzziah became very strong. Right? There, there's a strength that comes with the apostolic anointing. Amen. And even in the face of opposition, you just get stronger. Right? What happened to the early church in the book of Acts as opposition came? Did they get weaker? They, they got stronger, right? You know, the church is growing strongest throughout the earth in some of the places where there's the most persecution. Persecution never, well, in some cases it has, but generally persecution just causes the church to grow. Right? I mean, they've cracked down again on China. Right, we're hearing of tales of fresh persecution, even though that's never quite let up. Right? All over the earth. What starts happening in America, we think it's the last days. Because we think the world revolves around us when persecution's been going on for thousands of years. And it actually fuels revival and awakening. Right? There's a strength that even... Uh, when there's an apostolic anointing, when God's moving, even when opposition comes, we move forward. We just grow stronger. Amen. Now, none of us like to experience that. I'm, I'm not believing for that, but man, we're in a crazy time in America right now. Hallelujah. Verse 9 says, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate and at the valley gate and at the corner buttresses and fortified them. An apostolic anointing causes a strengthening of gates. Amen. And what do gatekeepers do? They guard the access points of a city. Right? It's been about two, two-ish years ago, Ryan Lestrange gave us an, a, a word as a church that gatekeepers were arising in this place. He said there are gatekeepers arising. and the, You know why gatekeepers, gatekeepers have to arise? Because we're a gateway city. We're in a strategic place in Oklahoma. And not to re-preach other sermons or anything, but we've seen a, a move coming into the state and it being opposed at the border of Oklahoma. Right? So if, it's, if we've seen that by the Spirit then what needs to happen at the gate in order for the move of God to fully manifest? Gatekeepers better arise, right? Gatekeepers say, okay, we give access to certain things, right? God, we're, we're, we'll lift up your heads, O ye gates, that the King of glory may come in, right? Who are the gates of God's glory and presence? We are, right? And God's saying, I'm needing gatekeepers to further call in and loose the move of God in regions. The Lord's like, I'm looking for gatekeepers. I'm looking for those who will build up the wall. Right? I'm looking for those who will stand before me in intercession for the land. Now, sadly, in the New, in the Old Testament, there are times God said He was astonished that there were no, there was no one. So if we want to see God's glory come, we have to be gatekeepers that usher in the move of God, but we have to be gatekeepers that, all, all, that also say no to certain things from coming in. Right? Now I'm not just talking about picketing or protesting, though God may ask you to do that, but by the Spirit, we have to say no, we're not allowing that in. Right? So, I will be so bold as to say there's a deficit in this city of gatekeepers who will arise. Which is sad when there's churches on every corner, but how many of us are really functioning in a gatekeeper anointing that's saying, God, we usher in your move and we say no to what the enemy would want to do. We got a lot of religious activity
but a not, a, not a lot of a gatekeeping anointing that says, I'm actually going to pray and say no. Now, is the gate, are the gatekeepers arising? Yes. Yes. And God's saying, I'm looking for gatekeepers because that's part of being an apostolic and being a prophetic people that takes seriously the, the stewardship over our city. Right? Now, God's doing something, you know, and, and we're growing into something, but we have to take it, and I'm convicted right now just talking about it. I have a friend who years ago was talking about a, a minister who claimed to be the apostle over Ardmore, and my friend said, well, I wouldn't lay claim to that. Because he said, Ardmore's a mess. Right? But... There's apostolic anointing being released to an apostolic people who will see these things manifest. We have to strengthen the gates. Amen. Verse 10. He built towers in the wilderness and hewed many cisterns, for he had much livestock, both in the low and in the plain. Okay. So another thing that apostolic anointing does, and we've preached about this at length, is there is an anointing to build and there's an anointing to dig. Amen. To dig a well. To redig wells of revival. To see those things where you're like, we're digging a well, right? And people are going to come and they're going to be watered and they're going to receive the move of God. And, and, and you can even dig a well in a desert and people still get watered, right? We're in a desert, so what? We'll dig a well. Right? I mean, what was it? Farley Lewis from Springfield, Missouri, years ago prophesied to us. He said, there's a, there's a Rephidim anointing that's coming to your church. And Rephidim was the place where the water came out of the, the rock for the children of Israel and watered an entire nation in the desert. That's, that's a lot of water coming out of a, a well. Right? And he gave me that word, and I was just like, dude, what? He's like, yeah, there's a Rephidim anointing on your church. And he said, you're going to water a nation. And people give me words like that, and I'm just like, just stop. Because that means I'm accountable to believe this into manifestation. Right? I love what Benny Johnson's mom said. People are asking her, do you, can you believe what's happening at Bethel? She said, yes. God told us this is what would happen. And she said, we've prayed 50 years to see this happen. Some of us long to have a hard time praying consistently for something for 50 minutes. And she said, we've prayed for 50 years to see what happens now every day at Bethel. Do you feel eternity in this moment? Do you feel the importance of a generational move that God wants to break in? Where it's not just us, but our parents and our grandparents and our, our children and our grandchildren, that there's a generational move that God wants to release in a city. And sometimes if we don't see something in just a few days, we let go of it and we think, God, you're not doing it. And God's saying, no, no, you're building something. You're building something and give it to your children and give it to your grandchildren and, and fill them with truth. Fill them with wisdom. Fill them with the Lord's ways. And that which I've given you, let them take it to a higher level. There's an anointing to build. There's an anointing to dig. And they watered a multitude of livestock in the desert. Right? Get ready. Get ready now. And here's the danger that we wait for someday. And we don't stir what we've been given now to see what God said come into manifestation. Hallelujah. Here's a really fun one. Verses 11 through 15. More, and I don't know. Moreover, Uzziah had an army ready for battle. 
which entered combat by divisions according to the number of their muster. And he goes on and he talks about this army and every, the number of them. And verse 14, Uzziah prepared for all the army's shields, spears, helmets, body armor, bows, and sling stones. And in, in Jerusalem, he made engines of war invented by skillful men to be on the towers and on the corners for the purpose of shooting arrows and great stones. Hence his fame spread afar, far, for he was marvelously helped until he was strong. Apostolic anointing equips people to fight and overcome. Right. That apostolic anointing raises up an army. It understands that it's not just about one person. It's just not about a family. It's about a company. It's about a company of people that war. Right. And, and even in Nehemiah, they all stood on the wall and they were strategic where he placed them. He said, you, you build that gate. And you, you build that gate. And he said, if the enemy gets attacked in this area, blow the trumpet and we're going to gather to you and we're going to fight. You know, he was smart because he put them on areas where their houses were. And if they didn't build where their house was, the enemy was going to come in. Will that, will that motivate you? How about if we live that way in the kingdom? Well, I'm not going to build right now. Well, then if you don't, first of all, guess who gets hit first? You and your family. Right? And we'll gather if you blow the trumpet and help you out because we're not only army, but we're family. But build. Build in your home. Build with wisdom. The wisdom of God. Don't rely just on me or podcasts. And I'm all for podcasts. Right? But start building with your relationship with the Lord. And build with wisdom, right? Because the apostolic anointing raises up an army. It says, We're building and we're overcoming in this hour, right? And then Nehemiah says, God gave them a heart and anointing to build. And when they built, the enemies of God were demoralized. They began to give up, right? Because there was an anointing and it was causing something to happen quickly and something to happen supernaturally. Hallelujah. Now, in closing, with a warning, right? I made mention to it earlier. made mention of it earlier. Verse 16. But when he became strong, his heart was so proud that he acted corruptly and he was unfaithful to the Lord his God for he entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense, something he wasn't supposed to do. Right? One of the greatest weaknesses of an apostle in an apostolic company is pride. Right? It's one of the strongholds in this region. Right? Pride is huge here. Right? And we've talked about that, not to get into it. But don't get into pride. Right? Andy, don't get into pride. Right? Trust me, my family really works on keeping me humble. <laughs> it's a gift, Jamie says. It's a gift. They're extremely gifted. Right? <laughs> but there's an anointing that God's further releasing. I think some of what we're sensing and what we sensed last week and what we were sensing in worship is the increasing of the apostolic anointing. Right? Because God's doing something powerful and He's He's touching people and calling them into the army. Right? Sometimes God drafts people into the army. All the young guys are like, oh, right? He He's touching people today to say, Man, I'm I'm calling you. I'm calling you to live for something bigger than even your life. And to live for something bigger than even your family and your children. But to live for His vision, to see His glory fill not just a city, not just a region, not just a state or a nation, but to fill the earth. 
Halleluja. Jenny, did you have something? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. So I've just been hearing some words this morning for some people, and um, when I sat down this morning after worship, Logan, I just had like this, I, I just really felt your presence was really strong, and, um, <clears throat> and that's how I know sometimes God's trying to speak and show me something, but I watched this angel like walk, Andy's preaching, I watched this angel walk and put this large key in your hand, and um, so I I just continue to watch and ask the Lord what he was saying. And I, I believe that, he, that he's saying to you that, that he's, he's giving you a brand new key. But the key that you hold already is, is big. That he's giving you another key. And that you've been steadfast and you've, you've been um, stewarding what he's given to you. But he's, gonna, he's asking you to look again at what he's already given to you to steward. Even your classroom that you oversee in the classroom that you sit in. You, you, you play so many roles. Your job here, your job that you do to be able to be here. Um, so many of our teachers work many jobs to be able to do what they do, but he's asking, he's, he's, he's saying, go and look at what I've given you to steward, and, and I'm gonna take you to a new level of stewarding because those are such um, ministries that he's put in your hand and great responsibility, and, and I, then I just begin to see you just face down, just crying out for revival, and for reformation, and for those things, and you are like this gold key to, to a great move, and you hold within your hand so many things, and so many people to influence, and to bring into a move of God, and then he's giving you another key to use to unlock that next level. Amen. So I really believe he's speaking to some young people today. In the young people group. But Colton, I saw um oh my screens are messed up. Colton, I, I saw you just like like there was this platform and I've seen you on this rising platform many times before. And um I saw this platform and it was a small platform in the beginning, and I saw it was beginning to rise, but I saw all of a sudden this time, you had to like plant your feet. You had to set your face. And there are so many things coming at you and so many decisions to be made, and so because that's just what happens in this time of life, in this age. And, and I can just see the rushing of the, of the decisions and the, the bombardment of whatever life has, and that you have been so set apart because your call and purpose is so strong that you are just having to take in this moment. This platform is rising. I don't know if you can see it. I, I, I'm watching this platform rise, and it's not this huge platform. It's this small platform in this moment. And you're just having to plant your feet, set your face, and like, no, this is who I am, and this is who I'm going to be, and God has anointed me, and I'm going to do what he's called me to do. I will not be moved from where I'm supposed to, what I'm supposed to be doing and who I'm supposed to be influencing, and the call of God on my life. I will not be pushed off destiny and purpose. Amen. Hayden, I saw, um, I saw this thing fly towards you during service, and you grab a hold of it and begin to use it as a weapon. And I was like, what is that? And all of a sudden, my jaw, this sharp pain went through my jaw. And then I could see it clearly. It was a jawbone. I saw the Lord give you a jawbone to go and to take out some things in the spirit realm. And then I saw him touch your jawbone for you to be able to speak, not only to people and to influence them and to, to speak the word of the Lord, that's what you will do, but that you will speak to principalities and you will speak to the darkness and you will speak to heaven and you will bring heaven to earth in a whole new way. It's not all about the darkness and all of those things because when you begin to bring heaven to earth with the, what he, he touches your jaw and you begin to speak those things, it's like your jaw shifted. It's like it completely shifted and you spoke a whole new word and a whole new language even of, of heaven, bringing heaven to earth and it shifts the darkness. Amen?
and then Hannah. I saw, um, I saw just a moment ago, I saw this, like, it was like a cloud, like in a cartoon where it's like you're thinking something, you know, over your head, and it's like dot, 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 in this big cloud. And, um, and I was like, what's in the cloud? What, what's, what's being said or what's, and it was totally, I, I saw an eraser, erase everything there. And so I asked the Lord, I said, what are you saying, God? And, and I believe that, that you've had a, a great dream from a, a young, when you were very young, there was a big, big dream within you. And, um, and because of life and because of disappointments and because of just, we just live life, it's like those things have had to be erased. And I see the Lord, I just heard the Lord say, go back and dream again. Go dream again. He's bringing life to your dream. And you can dream even bigger than you dreamt before. And he's going to give you the insight to be able to take the steps to see your dreams fulfilled. Amen. 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 And Dean, you're the only person that's older that I saw anything for. (laughs) And it was just... And it was just a young at heart. It was just a moment ago, right before I stood up, I, I, I saw this seed that was planted right next to you. It was this little seed, and it was, and you were just standing by. And I, and and it's like you had to walk away from that seed that you had planted. I don't know how long ago. I feel like it was a while ago, but I, I just saw the Lord. I just saw you go over and just kind of pat it around a little bit and give it a little care. And begin to speak to it, and it began to shoot like a beanstalk. So just ask the Lord, what seed did I plant? Because I know we planted many seeds that we kind of all walked away from and thought, "Yeah, we'll never see that." But it's like you just had to step away. But I, I just, I just saw you just giving it a little water and a little food, speaking life to it, and it just began to sprout massively. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's stand together. I only got to about half of my sermon, so I'm not going to preach the second half right now. (laughs) Your your Christmas gift, right? (laughs) Hallelujah. Let's just put our hands out before the Lord. Father, you're commissioning us. And Father, just what you're pouring out today, what we are feeling in worship and in prayer, God, you're you're just opening something to us, Lord. And we just receive right now. Father, we just receive what you're giving. And Lord, we're in various places in our lives, but Father, I pray that you just commission us at this moment. And Father, you never um, send us without empowering us. And Father, I thank you that even as we go, we're empowered. But Lord, right now, God, we just, we just position ourselves before you. God, we receive further of this apostolic anointing, this kingdom anointing, this kingdom people to be gatekeepers. Lord, as you begin to call, some you'll call, some you'll give dreams, some you'll commission in unlikely times and moments. And Lord, we just purpose in our hearts right now to say yes to you and to stir what you've given. Lord, we want to stir well what you've given. And so, Father, some of us, you're getting ready to even promote for this new season because we stirred it well what you've given. Doesn't mean we had to be perfect or we were always perfect. But Lord, we just kept going and we just kept stirring and growing what you've given us. And so, Father, I thank you there's a commissioning anointing today. There's a commissioning anointing today, Father God, for just more. More for this next season. Father, as we're in a season of of celebration and family, but Lord, we're, we're, we're heading into a new season, a new year. Father, I thank you that you're giving us what we need at this moment for the new season. Lord, we thank you. We receive, we receive grace, not to excuse, but to empower. Thank you for your empowering grace today. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your love. We give you glory today. 
In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. So don't be surprised. Because sometimes in these moments we're like, yes, Lord. And then he starts doing it and we're like, wait. <laughs> no, God really took that seriously. Right? <laughs> Praise God. So if you need prophetic ministry, we'll have a prophetic team here. If you need physical healing, we'll have a physical healing team here. Remember, next Sunday we'll have a, a celebration time, candlelight, communion, carols. We won't do children's church next Sunday. We'll all be in here together for that. Remember, Supernatural School tomorrow night, for those that are involved in that, last class of 2018. And praise God, God's good. Yes, sir, Dean. Yeah, amen. Come on. Uh, thank you for that word because it's the prophetic that I walked away from. And God wants me to nourish that, nurture that again. Colton, while you were getting that word, that platform that was coming up, I saw in the picture that platform as it came up, all of a sudden you found your, yourself on a stage. And, and you know how they come up in there in the stage. And the Lord said to me that Basically, that you have things you're going to share. There's an audience. You're going to be given a stage. I was thinking like TED Talks, where people come to hear people say things of you know that are very powerful and in moments of wisdom. And people are you know I hear I, I I get on TED Talks a lot and I hear stuff. And I just felt like the Lord says He's giving you a, pl a stage and a platform, and he's, he's bringing you up. Right now, you just see a little. But as when you come up through there, then you're going to see what the Lord really gives you. And then the other word I got was for the prophetic. Uh, not the prophetic, for the uh, um, intercessory. Uh, when you were talking about the, two, the, the uh, machines, wisdom of the machines and all, uh, what the, I felt the Lord said that he's going to, the, the, the intercessors are going to craft prayers that will become weapons of mass destruction in the spiritual realm and that that you will do things that just will absolutely destroy the wet the enemy's plans and they will flee because of weapons of mass destruction that will be wisdom of how to pray and how to do it i don't you know all i know is i just that's what i felt those are the things that I felt. yeah 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 come on actually saw this last week mm -hmm. last sunday in, in mm -hmm. worship it was during the apostolic anointing and right. the spirit that was, that was coming and i shared it with mom that i really wanted to seek god on it as well to just right. get more meaning to it but it just it just goes so along with everything that you put the word right. that's been given this today and, and right. sunday but what i saw and i just feel it's really important that we put maybe we could put a vision to what this what this mm -hmm. even looks like in the spirit but I, um, what God showed me was on the street of Broadway, there were a few people in the, in the street. And I want to say it was maybe five or more that I saw. And I saw myself from a position in the street. And we were calling in the glory of God down Broadway. And we knew that he was building something and he was broadening something. And we were calling it in. And as this thing came in, it was almost like a living, breathing swarm, huge swarm of bees. Mm -hmm. But it was also being carried by, carried by his glory. And it just kind of stopped right there at the beginning of the, of, the, of the street of Broadway. And I saw Ardmore in the background. It was like this big water tower of Ardmore on it. And as it was coming down the street of Broadway, it was almost as we had to step out of the way. And we had to position ourselves in a place of humility. And forgiveness was a big part of that as well, to step out. And then as it came, we were as if we were cooperating with it, like we were bringing it in. And in the movie, um, as a child, the movie when... Uh, in the Wizard of Oz, but when Oz, when she 
when she stepped into the city of Oz, the color came. And so as these the swarm of glory was coming, it just brought color to right. the street. And I saw the building in the businesses. I saw financial growth, but even more so a spirit of generosity yeah. in those businesses. Yeah. And as the doors were opening, there was salvation and redemption and all of these wonderful things were happening within these businesses and like even abandoned buildings and businesses mm -hmm. were being opened up in growth yeah. and it was it was amazing to see and i just saw our our part in this and yeah. that this is happening and in our city and and if you just need to vision that as you're praying and bringing this forth and see whatever position God has you in that. Amen. So you can be building in within your own ministry. Amen. So father, we just declare yeah, you, what God. you're doing in the city, God, Amen. and what you're bringing in your glory and what it carries for this city in particular and the broadening and the building that you're doing in this city. God, we cooperate with you, Lord. We call it in and we move aside, God. We move uh, aside our pride, Lord. We do not want to have our pride a part of this, Father. And we want this, all the fruits of the Spirit, God. We want to walk in the fruits of the Spirit, Lord, as we move away and allow you to come in in such a mighty, strong way, Father. Thank you for what you're bringing, Lord. We cooperate with you, Father. We cooperate with you, Father, and we want to be a part of the richness and the generosity that's coming to this city, the spirit of love that's coming into this city, God. We pray for every person that is going to be a part of this, Lord, that is going to receive you a part of this, Father. The, the darkness that they walked in, no longer. The gray, the muted life, no longer, but a, 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 a life that is full of color and, and your love, God. We thank you for your amazing work, Father, and that we can we can be a part of it, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We say yes, Lord. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> in in deliverance ministry, mm -hmm. when you're dealing with something ancient, you ask God to bring the hornets of heaven. Mm -hmm. And so when Laura was talking about it. Yeah. The key of, of this technique mm. is getting out of the way. Of letting God's yeah. move and we come in and we help people. The key is to get out of the way. Yeah. And when you said that and you said the bees, there's no difference in that yeah. between bees and hornets. Uh, I don't want to see either one of them swarm because I've I've seen them sting out yeah. ancient things. And you were talking about millionaires have been there, and and, and, it, and it's funny as downtown. Mm -hmm. There's something of the apostolic that was released yeah. last week, and it continued to be released. Yeah. Guys, we just got to get out of his way yeah. and be obedient. Yeah, and it's coming in in a broad way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's not just a narrow place. It's a broad way. Amen. So praise God. Father, we thank you for all those words and all those prayers. And Lord, I thank you as gatekeepers and as a gatekeep people of gatekeepers. We say yes, Lord, to your move. We say that this is coming in. Lord, we get out of the way. We ask for it to come, but Lord, we move so that you can come in in all your glory and do what you've purposed to do. And Father, those things that have been rem that have tried to be hidden in the downtown area, Father, I thank you, Lord, that you're breaking those out right now. And let your glory come. Let your glory come. And restore and repair every breach. The desolations of many generations are being restored. Father, no more, no more desolation. No more desolation. No more desolation, Father God. But Father, the fullness of your kingdom coming in. Father, we thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow. That is really powerful. So, watchmen, gatekeepers, be very sensitive over these next hours and days.
to what the Lord is saying. Amen? Amen. All right. Bless you guys. Have a great day.